Could I skip it? I didn't think, okay. <laughs> Where we are now is our two minute closing. So each of you will have two minutes to make your closing statement and we're gonna start with uh, Ms. Galloway. My name is Monica Galloway. Um, I've been married to my husband for 25 years. I have two children, grown children. Um, why do I want to serve on your city council? For a lot of people, there are a lot of respected people in the community that have been working in this community for a long time, and a lot of them I do not know. Um, my community has been Ebenezer Ministries. You have to forgive me. And I've served that community with faithfulness and dedication since 1996. I've counseled numbers of husbands and wives on marriages, pre and post counseling. Um, I've trained and educated our youth from five years old up until 30 years old. I've trained our women. And although for some I look like I'm a new face, I'm not a new face. I'm just in a different forum. I've worked very hard, I'm committed to this city. Um, I've had banking background for over 15 years, so I'm very um, familiar with the responsibility of the city council, which is number one priority, is budgeting. Who is the check and balance for the money? Um, of course, there's ordinance things that I need to learn, but this would be to me like an entry level position. And so I have council people that are on the council that I'm sure would be willing to train me in that area. But I love the city of Flint, and I'm not bound by a ward. I touch everybody that I come in contact with. And what I would suggest to you, if you don't know me, please don't judge me. Please don't not vote for me because you don't know me. Check your own circle. There may be somebody that knows me. Please give me an opportunity to get to know you before you make a decision on who you choose. I'm not competing against anyone else but myself. I have a voice for certain people. And if I am that voice for you, I'm asking that you will vote for me on November 5th. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I respect uh, my opponent. She's uh, everything I've gotten a chance to learn about her. She's a fine individual. The difference between her and I is, and she just uh, outlined it, she wants to be trained. I don't need to be trained. I spent 20 some years learning about this city and its government. I was born here. The fact of it is, I want to be substantive in this debate. I want to talk about water rates. I want to talk about the pipeline. I want to talk about the city budget. Unfortunately, the way this format has been devised, I'm not able to get that substantive. Here's what we have with our EFM. Again, those dirty little secrets. Two years into it, or will be in a few weeks. That EFM took what was an $8 million deficit and doubled it in the first year. Now it's probably close to $20 million. There are things, squandering of resources. There was a lawsuit by, uh, by a former budget director named Townsend, Michael Townsend. And the fact of it is, Mr. Townsend decided he had been let go unfairly. Our charter prescribes, clearly prescribes, that when the mayor dismisses a department head or appointing, he does so because they serve at the pleasure of the mayor. But you know what we paid Mr. Townsend as he cried foul? $400,000. Decision of this EFM. I could go on and on. I'm not going to get that opportunity tonight, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm going to be the guardian of your tax dollars. I'm going to fight for you, and even in 15 seconds, I'm going to let you know that there is no one more equipped and better able to provide and serve this community. Thank you. Wow. Coming to serving, one of the greatest things is the ability to be able to serve and the strength and the durability to continue to serve. I didn't just retire from General Motors. I left General Motors on a career transit to help other women transit from being from the work first to work. I invest over $150,000 and created jobs when I came here. I didn't ask for a tax basement. I went to work. I transport kids from all over Flint back and forth to school. I understand what this city needs. 
I am a job inventor. I am trustworthy. And before I even decided to serve, I knew that the country was going into a different direction. President Barack Obama sent for me and a couple more people and initiated us as grassroots leaders, preparing us what this next economy is getting ready to go. We're getting ready to take a totally different turn, and we got to be prepared for it. When I went back, I said, what can I do? He said, the first thing you do when you have some of his staff members is go back and get your master in public administration. That master in public administration allowed me to negotiate allows me to make quick decisions, allows me to work under pressure. I didn't ask nobody for anything. I worked and paid for it. We are wealthy. This city is great. We got the greatest people here in Flint. Our youth over here at the multi-diversity uh, program that I was in, it took my heart. It made me really begin to think, we are not the murder capital of the world. I would not take that. I would not receive that. We have great, great, great teachers and leaders in children here in Flint. Some of the women I have developed, they are doing very, very well. We need people to roll your sleeves up, cut this bigger out, and let's move Flint forward. Thank you for voting for me for your eight ward city council. Hello, and let me introduce myself again. My name is Vicki. Mata, uh, some years ago when I first started working for the city in uh, 1977, but now it is Vicki Van Buren. So people have known me with both names and realized, hey, I am the, still the same person, the dedicated community servant that I have been for many, many years. I started out at City Hall working with neighborhood organizations, over 200 some groups, black clubs, crime watches, working with thousands of people trying to work with concerns, how to organize, how to take care of situations in their neighborhoods. Then continuing on with the schools and working with the children, and I still continue giving and giving because I care what is going on in this city. I was born here, I'm 67 years old, and I do not plan on leaving. I don't want to leave. This is home. I've seen Flint during the heydays when we had concerts down at the riverfront. When the Hyatt Regency first opened up, those were the good old days when we'd go to restaurants and walk down the streets. But now, look at the change that we have gone through. But can't give up because we still have more that we can do. You can see that happening already with downtown. You can see that already happening in the neighborhoods. And it's because of the people. And we don't know everything that's going on. That's why we have to be out there talking to people, seeing what they're doing. See all these gardening that are projects that are going on and the commitment people are making. They don't even ask for anything. Some are doing it on their own with no resources provided to them. But they make a difference. They're looking out for their neighbor. They'll cut their neighbor's lawn. They'll pick up trash when they see it or help a child that's in need. And now as we keep dealing with these situations, we can still do it. But let's do it together. Let's be a little stronger and share these ideas and find ways that we can make things happen, even though we have limited resources. Again, remember the Thank name. Thank you, Ms. Van Buren. Vicky Van Buren. Thank you. My name is Mr. Wontwez Davis, and thank each and every one of you for attending, who had just showed up and wasn't here when I thanked everybody in the beginning. I want to be a loyal servant to my community. I sit at night, every night. My wife tells me, she said, babe, I can't wait till it's over with because you don't eat, you don't sleep good. I've lost 25 pounds in this campaign because I have a strong passion for my people. My city is crippled. My community don't even look like a community anymore. And I go to the elders and they don't even have a voice. I want to give them a voice. I want to give them the hope that they once lost, that they once had, that they've lost. I want to bring it back to my community. A leader is one who organizes. That's all I do is organize. But I organize people to bring them together so we can sit on one accord and just attack the issues that cripples our city. I want to be able to give this back to my city that, the things that we don't have no more. I want to get rid of this grass. I want to get these houses cut down. I want to get rid of this National Geographic that's in our community. Skunks, the groundhogs. I mean, our community is just towed all the way up. I mean, we have to get rid of this stuff. We do. But most importantly, I want to be able to continue to engage with the hopeless youth who has lost their hope. 
to show them that you can be a better person tomorrow. I think the best thing in life is when we strive for good character and great principles. A great principle to me is a rule of action. I make a rule tomorrow.